Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Grunberg, uh, in our work papers here, in briefing papers, there's a statement that says, Chairman Volker has argued that activities such as proprietary trading and sponsoring hedge, fund, hedge funds and private equity funds should not be conducted by firms that benefit from a federal safety net, such as deposit insurance or access to the Federal Reserve System discount window. Proponents of the rule have argued that by moving certain risky non-core activities out of the institutions that benefit from deposit insurance and access to the window, the restrictions would better protect taxpayers and help create a more resilient U.S. banking system. What's your response to that reaction to that statement? Well, I think the underlying premise of the proponents is that um, the, the activity here is um, speculative short-term trading, right. uh, relying on funds that are generated as a result of the public safety net of deposit insurance and, and access to the discount window. I think that's, for the proponents, that's the, the key issue, and that's why they want to constrain that activity, that it's inappropriate to, in effect, engage in speculative trading activity utilizing uh, funds derived from the public safety net. Okay, and a while ago, I think um, Mr. Gutierrez uh, asked you a question about the cost to the FDIC insurance fund over the last several years. Now, you gave a $30 billion cost to the failures. Um, what proportion of that would you say would be as a result of the kind of activities that we're talking about this morning that the Boca rule would affect? Yeah. I, or yeah, just off the head... Yeah, I don't know that you can discern from the failed institutions that we've had the relationship to uh, uh, to proprietary trading activities. Well, can you, I mean, out of the banks, the 200 banks that failed in the last couple of years, I'm sure a lot of those are community banks, which you just testified weren't probably part of the problem. Of the bigger folks that have caused some difficulties, for the other banks, obviously the big banks were consolidated and a lot of them didn't fail. There's a result too big to fail doctrine. Uh, but there are a lot of folks who were inadvertently affected by this. No, no figures on that, no guess? Well, I'm, I'm, in terms of tying it to the proprietary trading activity, I think, and it's been pointed out. Well, I think there's, there's hedge funds and private equity funds, too. This is what the Volcker Rule I was addressing here. I mean, I, I, well, I, that's why I read the whole question. I mean, I, I think the proponents, and that includes Mr. Volcker, have indicated that they view the uh, proprietary trading restriction essentially as a, as a forward-looking um, how much risk, let me ask the question this way, how much risk do you think is appropriate for the banks to take in, on, on using, utilizing these instruments? Do you think there should be a, a different weighting of this when you start looking at uh, adequate capital with regards to um, the size of the, the institution, the amount of activity that they have? Is there, there are certain criteria that you think would be necessary there? Well, I mean, the, the Volcker rule is focused on the, uh, it goes to the question of what mechanism you want to use to try to, address the risk identified here. One, one approach would be capital requirements relating to these activities. Another, which is really the statutory provision in Section 619, goes to constraints on the activity itself. I mean, there are two alternative approaches. I think the statute chose the latter. Okay, I'm running out of time here. I've got two more questions I want to get to. One is uh, Mr. Pirro. Uh, you and I have discussed this before. It's a little bit off topic here, but it is with regards to uh, activities that deal with regulatory uh, stuff coming from um, different departments. The Department of Labor uh, issued, withdrew the proposed ruling on definition of fiduciary. And uh, have you been working with the department at all on this issue? And can you give us just a quick update in about seconds? We've had a number of conversations with them and discussions. Um, as you know, they're interpreting their uh, rules under ERISA and the. Uh, are you are you working with them and making sure that your point of view and your oversight over this is not yes, impacted? Yes, we've had a number. Of, okay. Yes, we've had conversations. Right, very good. And Mr. Trill, I think you were trying to address with uh, Congressman Grimm here a minute ago with regards to the question he had on enforcement of these foreign entities who were dealing with uh, proprietary trading activities. Can you? I mean, I thought that was a great question, and we didn't get to answer it. Would any of you or Mr. Trill or whoever else would like to jump in here? How is enforcement mechanism going to work on folks who are offshore who are doing business uh, here? Can you explain your oversight over that and how? Well, if they have, if if they have a subsidiary or a branch or an agency here in the United States. In order to sell here, they have to have a branch or a subsidiary. Well, no, no, that no, that wouldn't necessarily be the case, Congressman. It could be that. They had a branch which uh, was unrelated directly to the proprietary trading, but that's still an avenue in for enforcement because you have jurisdiction over the entity. Okay. If, if, if it's purely 
if it's purely an entity overseas, there could be a jurisdictional question of what kind of... In other words, if, if an entity overseas is doing business with an individual or a company here uh, and, and selling these types of... or doing these types of activities back and forth, how would... You, there, there's a question of jurisdiction who would be able to enforce... That'll be the last question. Well, but, but remember, the, the, the firm is where we're, primar we're going to be concerned with are those that are operating in the United States, and they would have one of the um, uh, subs or agencies or branches okay. that I referred to a moment ago. Thank you. Thank you.